Hi YouTube, in this video I'm going to introduce you to one of my favourite frog species on the whole planet which is the Vietnamese mossy frog. If you haven't seen one before, it just really looks like a piece of moss. The camouflage is incredible. So that was one on the back of this Exoterra. And what I'm going to do in this video as well, I'm going to clean this out and just show you how I do my cage maintenance basically. So that little... Uh, chart that I had on the front of the cage there just stops the light getting in and I'll talk about that a bit more later. So what I'm doing to start with here I've got a bit of bog wood just moistened it so I'm just going to replace basically all of the bits um, that I've just cleaned put them back in. Um, incidentally when I'm cleaning them I'm just using spring water I don't use anything else you've got to be really careful not to introduce any chemicals this is a layer of eco earth coconut fiber then we've got some uh, mesh in the middle and then we've got these um, clay balls at the bottom that's just for drainage to allow the water to get through you don't want that bottom section to completely fill with water otherwise the water will become stagnant you just need it so that when you're spraying on the top the water can filter through that uh, filter mesh and it helps clean it okay these are a couple of bits of cork bark so bogwood and cork bark are really good because they resist mold if you just went to your local woods and just collected um you know some well just any old bit of wood you might find that it's already a bit rotten or it might go a bit moldy and that could uh, really well it could even end up killing your frog so try and uh, avoid that at all costs okay here's some fresh moss um, what I do is I put some in if the moss takes occasionally it does uh, and then it'll just grow in the cage that'd be great if it doesn't take if it starts to go brown and die then obviously you take it out and you put some fresh moss in every so often. If the moss is already wet with rainwater, that's fine. Uh, if not, if you need to wet it, then just again use bottled spring water. Never ever use tap water because it can contain things like uh, fluoride and chloramine. And those things again like absorb through the skin of your frog really easily and could end up killing your frog very quickly. I try to reposition everything back exactly where it was each time I clean out my animals. Um, I read somewhere in a book once that um, for things like lizard species, it can really stress them out if you're um, changing all the time. You know, you just think, oh, I'll, I'll reorganize the cage and I'll change everything that's in there. It can actually end up stressing your animals out. So I kind of figured it's probably the same with frogs. So I just try and keep it the same. Right, here's a little uh, ramekin that I use as a water dish. I just press this down into this uh, eco earth. Eco earth is just coconut fibre that you buy in a block and you just hydrate it. Okay, this is a spray bottle that I've got. I thoroughly recommend getting one of these if you keep any amount of animals. Um, you just pump it a few times like that and then it's ready and it'll spray for quite a long time. And uh, it's just really easy to use. So I use this to thoroughly spray down everything. Bear in mind that the Vietnamese mossy frog in the wild, it lives in caves. So we're really trying to mimic that really wet, humid environment. I fill this water dish up right to the brim. And the main reason for that is because the frog has a couple of favourite positions in the cage. One is where it is now on the back wall. And the other one is actually sitting right in the water dish with just its head kind of poking out. Um, so I change the water very regularly in this um, because the, the frog probably... Uh, goes to the loo in it uh, so it's important I think to change it probably every couple of days another reason for filling it right to the very brim is that I feed the mossy frog on crickets and if crickets get in the water they drown very easily um, if it's right full to the brim quite often the cricket can grip onto the uh, very edge and then get itself out of the water and it saves it from drowning Right, here's a sort of plastic plant. I mean, I really would love to use, you know, real plants in all my cages. But actually, you know, with frogs, sometimes you wonder if some of the plants might be a bit poisonous or, you know, sometimes they die in the cage, which is not ideal. So just a simple plastic plant like this just adds a bit of extra colour in the cage. Uh, and I think probably the frog appreciates it, even though it's plastic. Another added benefit of a plastic plant, of course, is that you can wash it really easily. So it's all nice and clean again. Okay, here's a mossy frog on my hand. 
See what I mean about how absolutely stunning they are. Sometimes it sits on a bit of moss in the cage and even though I know it's there, you know, I still have to search around for it. And it's, this is a pretty small cage, really. Um, so just incredible that even though I know it's there, sometimes it's quite tricky to spot. But yeah, absolutely stunning. I mean, look at all the little tiny kind of bumps and the texture. Just brilliant kind of uh, adaptation to living in a cave. Incidentally, I don't know whether you could see in this video or not, but I dipped my hand in that water dish before I held the frog. It's important just to wet your hand a little bit uh, so the frog doesn't get the salts and things from your hand. I never hold him for very long either. Uh, just while I'm cleaning him out occasionally, I'll just pick him up and then put him somewhere else. Uh, it's nice for him to sit on my hand. I really enjoy looking at him closely, but... Uh, it's important not to let him dry out and not to let him absorb anything horrible that might have been on your hand. Definitely, if you've been using any kind of skin products or anything like that, anything with chemicals in, make sure you thoroughly wash your hands first before holding any amphibian. Okay, from what I've read about these Vietnamese mossy frogs, although they live in caves, they tend not to live in the very darkest parts of the caves where it's pitch black. It tends to be more like on the um, outer edges of caves. So if you look here, this chart that I was talking about before, that I just uh, put on the side here, it just blocks the main light. That side of the cage is where the window is, so it would get pretty strong light coming in otherwise. This just blocks the majority of the side and just allows like a little bit of light to get through the gap at the top there. At the moment, I only have this one male mossy frog, um, I will definitely try and source a female at some point because I hate keeping animals singly. Um, also, when I manage to breed animals, that is the best sign for me that I'm doing something right and keeping the animals happy. So I always try, wherever possible, to keep animals in pairs and breed them. If I do get a female, I'll move them into a bigger exoterra and I'll try and set up a small pond area as well. I love the idea of one day rearing up a whole load of tadpoles from this species. Okay, I hope this video has been useful for some of you. Check out my other animal videos and hit subscribe to see anything that I post in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.